Joseph Kaczynski has been quite the popular guy. First we had Top Gun Maverick, and now we get this Netflix movie Spiderhead. This marks the third time the director has teamed up with Miles Teller, but he's also brought Chris Hemsworth and Journey Small along for the ride. Should you be adding this one to your list? Two inmates form a connection while grappling with their pasts in a state-of-the-art penitentiary run by a brilliant visionary who experiments on his subjects with mind-altering drugs. This film starts out a bit rough. We're thrust into an ongoing story where inmates in this very isolated prison are undergoing a series of tests as part of their sentencing agreement. The story is a bit jolting and abrupt at the very beginning, but then finds its footing and gets into the groove that it maintains for pretty much the rest of the movie. His prison is on an island out in the middle of the ocean, somewhere nondescript. The prisoners walk around freely, mostly because there's just nowhere for them to escape to, but also because they've agreed to take part in some clinical trials, testing out new and unproven drugs. Miles Teller is one of the inmates, and he brings a lot of charm to his character. He's somewhat soft-spoken, charismatic, friendly, I mean, even kind, but he's also got damage and regret in his eyes. Over the course of the story, we get to see why he's there and how that shapes his current outlook, but these don't come immediately. First, we get drawn into his character by his behavior and his personality, and I found it very effective. Chris Hemsworth plays the researcher who is in charge of the trials. Now he has good rapport with the inmates, treating them almost as equals. He's got a level of hubris that peeks out every now and then, but most of the time, it's held in check behind a glowing and welcoming smile. Hemsworth doesn't play the character as smarmy or slimy, but as someone who comes across as a compassionate researcher, genuinely wanting to work with the inmates on these discoveries. Now, for some of the drug trials, we get to see what the characters see when the drugs are administered. We can see how some alter perception, and the camera does a good job of showing us the result. Now, I'm grateful, that, though, that this isn't overused. Once we see how perception has changed, we rarely see it again, but instead get to observe how the inmates behave in reaction to how they are now perceiving the world around them. There's a growing tenseness and anxiety within the story as we feel an urgency come from Hemsworth to have more progress achieved in the study. This slowly but effectively increases the pace of the story, building a swiftness to the actions as we get closer and closer to the climax. I think a lot of the story progression is obvious and it's predictable. While some specifics may not be blatant, the general direction of where this is all headed and how it's going to end won't really come as a surprise. And for me, that's probably the biggest disappointment in this. Not that it was predictable, but that it became obvious so early on in the narrative. I wanted more obscurity in the motives, to have doubt raised or even intrigue so that I could wrestle with a differing possible outcomes. I like the moral questions that are present, but I feel those are also pretty obvious and overt. They're just natural questions that would be asked when it comes to drug discovery. I never really felt any ambiguity or situations where I began to question my own moral outlook on the situation. There wasn't a conflict that arose where I really was weighing the risks and benefits against humanity. It was all presented and executed matter-of-factly. That's not to say that the drama wasn't enjoyable, because it was. It just wasn't as deep or impactful or even thought-provoking as it could have been or as I'd hoped that it would be. Amidst all the drama, there are some great moments of sarcastic humor that poke through. Hemsworth gets some of it, as does Teller, but the majority of the snarkiness comes from the character Mark, who is Hemsworth's assistant. It's questionable if this guy is on board with what's going on, and his muttered comments, they're pretty funny, but not in a gut-busting way, just very humorous with well-timed wit. The movie's an hour and 46 minutes, but it flew by. I mean, I wasn't ever bored or even looking at my watch. The dynamic between Teller and Hemsworth is fun to watch, and it's pretty engaging. They have good energy together, and they feed off each other to make their presence enjoyable to watch. They're also pretty convincing in their emotions. I like how Teller is hurt and struggling internally, while Hemsworth gives off the persona that nothing bothers him. When cracks begin to appear in both characters, that's when they really become interesting characters to watch. We get to see more of their inner selves break free, and whether that complements or contradicts what we've previously seen in the character, it's helping to invest us more into the story. There are some moments of CGI, or at least they feel like they're CGI, and they're not too convincing. There's a sequence with a plane that felt kind of cheap, especially when we can compare it to Kaczynski's other plane movie that's still playing in the theaters. There's also a sequence that involves a person being hurled out of something, and it's odd to watch because it's very clearly fake. I mean, in this instance, I would have preferred to have the camera farther back so that the fakeness just wasn't as obvious. But there are also moments where practical effects look to be utilized, and they were much more convincing and visceral. There are some moments of extreme violence, and they were executed really well, making me wince a bit at what was being shown. So overall, Spiderhead is a fun drama with some good subtle humor and some great chemistry with the actors. The story itself is obvious and predictable, never delving into a spot that causes moral ambiguity or true emotional conflict. 
The performances are enjoyable and the film moves efficiently through its allotted time. But I think this could be so much more of a memorable and impactful story if we're given the opportunity to examine some real emotional depth and consequence. The movie is fine while it's playing, but when it ends, it becomes very forgettable with no lasting significance. There's sex, maybe some very, very brief nudity, a ton of profanity, and some brutal violence. I give Spiderhead three out of five couches. So what are you watching this weekend? I'd love to hear about it in the comments below. If you enjoyed this review, please give it a like. Also, don't forget to share and subscribe. I'm Chris. This is Movies and Munchies. Thanks for couching with me.